One of the sequencing questions that comes up is if we start someone on endocrine therapy in a CDK4-6 inhibitor, what do we do when they progress? I think one question is, should we continue the CDK4-6 inhibitor and just swap the endocrine backbone? And would there still be benefit to continuing CDK4-6 inhibition beyond progression? And truthfully, we don't know the answer to that. And there are a couple of trials that are ongoing trying to address that question. One of those trials is the PACE trial. This is taking patients who, again, have progressed on upfront CDK4-6 inhibition and randomizing them to receive fulvestrant alone, fulvestrant with palbociclib, or fulvestrant with palbociclib and evelumab. So it's adding on a pdl one antibody in that third arm, trying to look for synergistic activity with immunotherapy. But I think that trial will help us answer this question, is, is there benefit to continuation? I think there's also the question, would it make a difference if you swap the CDK4-6 inhibitor too? For example, if someone got palbociclib and ribociclib up front, and then you switched over and gave abemocyclib in the second line setting, would that agent have benefit rather than continuing the same CDK4-6 inhibitor? And again, there are some small trials that are looking to address that question. One trial is specifically looking at patients who got, let's say, an aromatase inhibitor in palbociclib, but then you continue the same endocrine agent and then you just swap the CDK4-6 inhibitor to abemocyclib at time of progression. And I think that would really help us understand if switching CDK4-6 inhibitor treatment will actually have benefit for patients. So I think this idea of continuation of CDK4-6 inhibition is certainly a very open one at this point in time.